Hey guys, Ascending God here. And below. Alright, so, taking a look at Faction Wars here, gonna do some tips and tricks on it. Now, Faction Wars is still pretty new right now, this is only the third day into it. So, as such, the furthest any of us have been able to get is beating the Stage 7 boss and you run out of keys. So, in many cases, we uh, have a, had a handful of those encounters where that didn't happen, mainly because the trash is so easy up to the bosses, then some of the bosses are brutal, uh, like seemingly overtuned compared to the prior trash up until the bosses. But but we'll see if that's intended or not down the road if Polarium nerfs some of those bosses. So you can see here with Night Revenants, I got all the way up to the stage six, no problem. I got massacred at stage seven because of the group that I had and because it was so easy up until then, I had it on auto and they got killed. So. I wanted to throw some tips and suggestions out there to everybody based on my clan's experience, uh, feedback from on the forums, and my own personal experience. So now to start, remember that Polarium has informed us in the patch notes that the order the factions go in is random. So don't rely on certain factions opening on any given day. They're going to randomly open on various different days. Now. As far as strategy here, the consensus as far as strategy at this time is this. Uh, one is to try to get five stars all the way up to stage seven. Okay, this way you don't have to go back and do them again later for the stars. This means making five champions survive through the battles. I'm gonna get into how to in just a bit. Uh, next thing is to get the stars by keeping those champions alive. You typically want at least one maxed out champion of that faction and then level up four other champions to level 30 or close to it, along with six pieces of gear up to at least level eight on each of those champions. This should have no problems keeping them alive until the stage seven boss. And then you also want to build your weakest factions just enough to get past stage 7 for now. As most likely, just like the prior stages, once you get past that boss, it's most likely going to get easier again until the next boss. And now, once your weakest faction teams can handle the stage 7 boss, prioritize building up your stronger teams. It makes more sense to have, say, three to four factions you can make real tough than to farm the later stages for better glyphs with less of them by having those really strong, you know, say three to four, um, rather than trying to build up your weakest ones and then in turn you have a bunch of the weaker ones built up and then you're just getting a ton of moderate glyphs because you didn't put enough time into your strongest ones. It makes a lot more sense in this instance where quality is better than quantity. In the long run, the strategy makes a lot more sense to start to prioritize your stronger factions as it's most likely going to take all of us a long time to get decent gear on all of our champions. So as such, the best glyphs that we can use for say clan boss, arena, dungeons, or if you don't need any of them on the gear in the groups you feel that you need them on, uh, whether it be your stronger faction struggling to get past a boss or a weaker team that can't progress where you'd like them to, it just makes a lot more sense to do that to say have three to four really strong factions factions that can farm those higher glyphs and get some really good quality ones than to say try to level out all your factions at all at once and try to get them all equal and then at the same time now you're getting a ton of glyphs but they're not going to be as strong as if you prioritize say three to four uh, factions there. Now also don't get frustrated if you struggle to get past stage seven even some of the vets and whales are struggling to get past some of the bosses. Like I said, I got slaughtered on the Knight's Revenant boss because I took it for granted. I didn't know how hard it was gonna be. I wasn't paying attention, all right? But um, prior to this, it was, you know, mostly who was viable for the clan boss, arena, dungeons, and then a champions for speed farming. So, you know, even some of my clan members who have been playing since the game's inception even got stuck on a couple of the stage seven bosses. We're all struggling here, and this is a challenge for almost all of us. It's supposed to be, you know, enjoy the challenge and be glad that it isn't just another grind. You know, um, depending on how much the stages and bosses increase in difficulty, this could be something that could take months, even just to have a solid two to three fa frac uh, faction, excuse me, that you can farm at high levels. All right, and if you are a vet in farming Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare on um, Clan Boss, just think of how long it took for you to build up that group 
or to build up your stage 20 dungeon groups, okay? This is going to take time. It's gonna take all of us time. A lot of us don't have all that extra gear saved up for the 60 plus champions we now need for this. And it's a gradual process for all of us at this point. So again, no need to get frustrated if you can't farm the end. No need to get frustrated if you get stuck on the stage seven boss. I mean, my clan uh, member leader, the leader of my clan, he's been playing since the game's inception. He got stuck on one of them. I don't remember which one, but he couldn't make it past the stage seven boss on one of them just because he had absolutely no champions maxed out in that faction. He had nobody decent in that faction. So he got slaughtered because he took it for granted. It was on the first day as well. So I think maybe it was either the Lizardman or the Night Revenant. I'm not sure which one. But um, anyway, so, um, you know, most of us did want a new challenge, and now we have it. So enjoy it while it lasts, because eventually this is going to become a grind, just like all the other content is. Now, unless you have at least two to three maxed champions, meaning gear, masteries, and tombs, I would strongly advise against using auto on the Stage 7 bosses. Uh, some of them have skills that you need to pay close attention to, and you want to use specific skills on that boss depending on those skill sets. So. With that said, tying into that same piece of advice, pay very close attention to what the boss's abilities are. When I uh, did uh, the Night Revenants here and I got slaughtered, I got absolutely slaughtered because I brought Deathless as one of my champions. I, I only had one max, it was Tomb Lord, and Tomb Lord just isn't that spectacular because he's so dependent on crit. That's a whole nother story that I've covered on a champion spotlight with him, so you can look into that. But Regardless, he was an okay champion, maxed out, and I brought Deathless as the other secondary champion that was really powerful, and at the time, I didn't realize that the stars were based off of five champions surviving. I thought it was like the campaign at that time, so I wasn't paying much attention. I was at work and just trying to do a quick farm of it to get it done um, before I ran out of time, and so I had two champions thinking, just like with campaign, you want to have two champions that can survive and get max stars as I'm sure a lot of you have already realized with this one, in order to get the max stars on this, the, the full three stars on these ones, you need to have five full, a full roster of five champions and all of them survive to the end. So it's a lot different. They're, they're actually encouraging us to have to have a group of five for each of the factions. So they know that's gonna take a while, that was intended. Now, so um, when I showed up to the Night Revenant boss there, what happened is that I had them loaded to the teeth with, uh, you know, um, with, with um, Tomb Lord, he was loaded up with crit rate and uh, mostly attack along with that. He was offensive. Deathless was loaded up with tons and tons of defense, loaded to the teeth with defense. But the boss literally two-shot her despite that. And after the first hit, I shut it off auto and I was like, oh my god, she just lost over half of her life from one hit. What the heck's going on? Looked at the boss and saw that the boss had an ability that completely ignores defense. So uh, despite her almost 4,000 defense, she got torn through like she was tissue paper. Now, other bosses you have to pay attention to because maybe you don't want to debuff them because they'll reflect those debuffs back on your team or they'll steal your team's uh, buffs so you don't want to buff yourself. So you have to take a look at each of the boss's abilities before you go attacking and I strongly advise against going on auto the first time around in each faction. All right. Now, since I'm going to get into this on another screen here because I'm going to show you the, the champions and the artifacts. I feel like the, the champion artifact storage on the game is really, really sloppy and it's really bad. A lot of people are complaining about that on the forums too. With that said, my suggestion is making yourself a spreadsheet to track everything going on. I'll show you mine really quick. Now you can see here with my uh, spreadsheet, I made uh, most of the info here from the Reddit champion ranking list. So if you're not sure of that, just do a web search for the Reddit uh, champion ranking, Shadow Legends, something like that. You'll find it. All right. They're not too reliable because some champions that are fairly new don't have their rankings yet, but just put your own in as you get experience with them. You know? Um, so. With that said, though, um, you know, the great thing about a spreadsheet here is that, you know, I expanded it and use it for Faction Wars now. And since it's an Excel spreadsheet, I can ex organize it by any of the lists and any of the columns that I want. So, like, say, uh, CB minus T6, CB plus T6 means Clan Boss prior to your Giant Slayer, and then plus T6 means after Giant Slayer. So, most of us that have been playing for a while, you should be taking this numbers into consideration. But 
I can organize this by anything I want. So say if I want to know who's strong in, say, the dragon encounter and who'd be good to farm with that, I'm just going to sort. Boom, I have all my A's at the top, regretfully because of the other, the best ones are S, it's at the bottom. But I look at the bottom first, see which ones I have with S's, I go, oh, Royal Guard's supposed to be really good, Tyrell's supposed to be really good. And then after those ones, then I go ahead and look at the top of the list for the A's, and then of course I want to avoid anything being below. But with that said, I also have the factions here, and you know, up, up to this point I had this sorted by the factions, okay? So you can see all the factions now sorted here in the list, and so I know which factions um, I, I have, you know, what champions in, along with their general stats, get a general idea of what's going on. Now, also with me to keep track of uh, what champions I have put gear on, I've also added an extra column over here to the right. Um, this is my own personal notes. I mean, whatever works best for you, but I mean, uh, I, I've noted every champion that's been geared so that I can keep track of where my gear goes. Okay, so you can see like with the uh, Demon Spawn, I have my five champions here, and each of them have a Y dash and then either a G, L, or an M. Okay, the Y dash G means that it's really good gear. So this is typically champions that are on the clan boss, arena, dungeon champions, things like that, where I need ones that are really powerful so they have some of my best gear. A Y dash M means that it's mediocre gear. So it's most likely not good enough for any of the end game content at this point, but good enough that it might be worth saving and maxing out on the champions that I have it on, at least some of those pieces that are on them. So like say for example here, Inethway Blood Twin, he's a legendary, he's pretty useful, he's pretty decent, and especially my demon spawn, he is currently, yeah, he is by far the best demon spawn that I have. I don't have many demon spawn as you can see. So with that said, I have mediocre gear on him to try to make him pretty decent because none of them have masteries on him. Even him, he's maxed out to level 60 but he doesn't have uh, his masteries, which puts him at a severe disadvantage. So I put mediocre gear on him to make sure I was going to get past that stage 7 boss. Alright, and then, um, so with that said, um, most of the gear that is Y-L is my low level gear. It's kind of trashy gear. It's just a temporary thing to get the three stars on those stages to keep them alive. Okay, so with that said, uh, that gear I usually won't level up past 12 at absolute maximum. Currently I'm leveling the majority of them up to uh, 8. That's all that I'm doing. Level 8 is affordable. Uh, level 12 takes a bit more time and it's a bit more costly. I'm finding that getting the champions up to a certain level and then the level 20 gear is keeping them alive. So, and with that said, I am going to cover the levels in just a bit here, but yeah, most of the gear I'm leveling up to level 8, because again, it's fairly reasonably priced. I'm still using a lot of coin for that. But now, the one that I'm going to be doing soon is the Ogren Tribe. You can see here I'm really, really short on Ogren Tribe, to the point where I even had to add in an Uncommon here and gear them up, which actually I have geared them, so let me note that here. They're with, of course, low-level gear. All right, and then uh, you can see that, uh, let me go ahead and minimize this Excel spreadsheet. So, uh, show you my Ogren tribe here. Now you can see I've leveled almost all of my Ogrens here to level 30. He's just shy of 30, he's at 30, he's at 34. And then I do have the one where, like I mentioned before, you usually wanna have one that's maxed out. And my maxed out one is Bellower here. He is my uh, speed farmer, so he has some really, really good gear, he has some really good stats, he has his masteries, all right? And so, the other ones, my suggestion is leveling most of the other ones up to level 30 and getting the gear on them to level 8. Uh, some of the gear on some of them is a little bit higher, like say this one's 13, because it's gear that I used previously on Champions in the past and then I just never sold off in case I needed it for something like Faction Wars or for uh, say a new champion that might come along. Alright, so I, uh, I didn't keep much regretfully, but if I leveled something up to 12 or more, usually I kept it. Uh, some of the gear was at 12 because it had decent stats, and then I wanted to see which substats were going to get increases at the 4, 8, and 12 marks. 
Uh, most of the gear on these champions did not get the substats increased that I wanted increased, hence why they now have it. Like say for example, maybe one had like speed and accuracy, but then the resilience went up. Or, like with this one, okay, so the speed increased, that was decent. But yeah, this gear overall, I mean, it's a green, so there wasn't many stats to increase. This one here, I leveled it up just to see which stats would end up on it. This is probably something that was really, really old from near the beginning of when I first started playing the game. But regardless, I held on to it, glad that I did, um, because now that it's coming into use. But if you don't have hardly any gear, don't be frustrated, a lot of people don't. You're gonna have to farm for gear along with leveling up the champions. But it, again, it's a process. And you're not the only one. I mean, again, I know some of my, my clan members that have been playing since the game's inception that are having to farm for gear now because they only, they would sell off all the gear that they didn't use for clan boss arena or dungeon. And I can't blame them. They wanted the money. They were spending coins on other things. And then now they're regretting it because they don't have any gear to put on all these other champions when you need like, what, 60 plus champions. But, um, so my Orgrim faction though here does have five champions ready for battle. So again, I got my Bellower. I got my Gal Cut. Not that great here, but again, he's at level 34. I got my Flesh Eater. Everything's up to at least level 8. And then again here, I have my uh, Old Beard. Everything's up to at least you know level 8. I have a couple that are at level 12, just because I figure he's an uncommon. He's weaker. He's probably going to need a little bit more for survival. Plus, I wanted to give him some of my accuracy gear because he does have a skill that's kind of useful. That's probably the only use that he's going to serve is uh, he can do a leech debuff. That's not that great. I think it's his main, yeah, a decrease attack debuff. So it's, it's only 25%, but it's better than nothing. I feel like that's probably the only purpose he's going to serve because both of these only attack one enemy. I'm not expecting him to hit hard. So I did the best that I could with him. But um, like I said, the one that I do have maxed out here is Bellower. Like I said, he's my speed farmer. So, um, you know, he has max gear, mask uh, masteries, and so, like I suggested before, he is my one minimum max champion that I'm going to have for this group. Now, if you don't have someone maxed, what I would recommend getting is at least three of your champions out of the group to level 50. And with gear that's modest, up to level 12. And I say this because with Skinwalkers that I did earlier today, even though my Steel Skull is maxed out here with uh, gear that can handle Ultra Nightmare, I'll even show you my Steel Skull. Okay, so Steel Skull, or as we call him Poison Pig. So the gear is maxed. He's pretty tough. He can handle the Ultra Nightmare. But yet, um, the rest of the, the champions that I had with him, the four others, they were at close to around level 30. They had the level 8 to level 12 gear on them, and it was a struggle. Like, he, there was a couple of times where I was worried about him dying, where he got down to about a quarter of his life near the end, even with healing himself because of the debuffs the boss was doing. So, um, that's why I suggest the, this is the bare minimum of having one really powerful champion, and, um, yeah, I mean, if you do have no champions that are maxed out, like I said, I would get at least three of them to level 50 uh, with level 12 gear that's modest. And I would also suggest getting at least like the first two to three tiers of the scrolls from the Minotaur Dungeon for masteries. Um, you know, at least get the first few because, I mean, they're pretty quick and easy to get. Um, and, and they're certainly far better than nothing. Like you can get the things like, you know, the increased uh, crit rate and the damage. You can get, um, you know, the extra accuracy if you have a strong debuffer like this or extra heals or shield, depending on what they are. Or if it's somebody who isn't, doesn't have particularly strong debuffs, then go with the defense and get some added defense here and maybe even, you know, get the shadow heal so that when the enemy heals themselves, you'll heal. Or, um, you know, bloodthirst where it heals them by 10% when you kill an enemy. So then, you know, on your weaker champions, when your stronger ones are killing the enemy, it's giving them at least a 10% heal each time. Something like that. I would at least suggest like the first few tiers of masteries. All right, so that would be my recommendation for the bare minimum going in here prepared to be able to, you know, not risk wiping on stage seven boss. All right, so my Bellower is obviously going to be the one carrying this group. And, oh, he still has one mastery that he didn't get, I forgot. But yeah, there wasn't anything that powerful on that tier. That's why I never got that yet. I still have to get it eventually, though. I've had too much going on since Faction Wars, and I just maxed him out not that long before Faction Wars. But um, some of the factions I have tons of. As you can see, like, say, for example, my 
uh, barbarians. I had no idea how many barbarians I had until Faction War started. I'm like, wow, I have a lot, and there's nothing that that spectacular. I don't feel other than my high Katoon. I love her for arena, so she has really good gear because she's. I use her speed or and speed boost in arena. But other than that, um, I had like uh, where is he? Aethar. Aethar is a barbarian, isn't he? Where the heck is he? Uh, why is Aethar missing from this list? Oh, maybe Aethar is, and Aethar is something else. I apologize. But anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, you can see from that that group there, like I have, some of them I have a lot of, the Ogryn I was really short on. So if you're really short, you might have to do what I did, which is take an Uncommon, or if you're really, really desperate, or it seems like it would be better even an Uncommon, and load them up with some gear for it, because you're going to want to bring in all five champions. You're not going to want to have to come back to this later. You're going to want to get the better uh, glyphs later on. So, um, with this group, I mean, I am bringing that uncommon because I had a choice of two different uncommons in my roster. I went with the one that I felt was the less worthless of the two. Alright, so for brevity, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this faction wars while I'm covering some more things here because we got to do... Now, the first several I'm going to do on the auto, it should clear it pretty quick, so it shouldn't take too long to get through this. All right, so let me see. And this it's interesting where a lot of the champions that um, are getting like these faction crypts skills now, so it's kind of cool, like he actually increases ally speed and faction crypts by 15%. I don't think he had an aura before, but um, thinking, I'm thinking what's probably going to be better here. Okay, so ally hit points in by 20%. I'm thinking hit points is going to be better in the long run here. All right, and then I, I don't know about you, one of the, the ways that I'm keeping track of uncommons or even the rares that where I have a lot of them and I want to keep track, not just the Excel spreadsheet, but also like with him so I don't confuse him with the other uh, uncommons like this is I actually ascended him one star. It takes two of like the weakest pots in like two different areas depending on the affinity. So to me, that was something quick and easy to do just to keep track of him so I don't lose track later on because it, I feel like it's so sloppy right now because it's like for each faction when the faction is up and I need to um, you know run through that faction war for that given faction I'm pulling them out of my vault and then as soon as I'm done farming it I put them right back into my vault so that I don't mix them up with my food and it doesn't get cluttered with you know my champions I use for clan boss and arena and dungeon things like that so all right, so let me auto this. Let's get through this really quickly, like I said. All right, and there we go. Sorry if my frame rate isn't the greatest. I got several different things going on on my computer at once. All right, great. So Bellower ripped through all the like I said. I was expecting to because he's maxed out. But this is where a lot of us got complacent with the stage seven boss that first day because we figured like, oh, this is all so easy. Like we just auto farm it, we're clearing it. It's just gonna be another grind near the end. Like, you know, uh, the campaign or dungeons where the, the first handful are really, really easy. But then you hit that stage seven boss and some of them are like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like, like again, like I said earlier, I feel like some of them and a lot of other people said the same thing. It seems like some of them are over -tuned. I mean, for a stage seven boss, completely ignore defense and to be able to two-shot champions that are level 60 max, I mean, it, it two-shot two order, maybe three-shot him, but regardless, his masteries are max, skills were not max, but his masteries are max, level was max, and he had decent gear, most of it was at level 16, and he got three shots, crazy, like, I just, I feel like that was over two. But maybe that's what they want. Maybe they want some of them to be really challenging. It's just weird that some of the bosses are not too hard and some of them are just absolutely brutal. So I think a lot of it they're going to realize later on was a little too harsh and they're going to probably ease back some of the Faction Wars Stage 7 bosses. And with some of them they might tweak them up a little bit, make them a little bit harder. Um, because they're a little too easy. But I mean by then it's probably going to be too late because we're going to be well past farming that. But, There we go. Another really quick farm. Just like one shot everybody up. But like I said, 
my Delaware ear is ripping through him, as you can see, I mean, he's hitting for like, you know, 40, 45K sometimes, because I have him loaded up for a speed farming the campaign. So, I farm in 12 sticks. So, I get through that pretty quick with him, usually about 20 seconds or so. So, like I said, he's, he's pretty powerful right now. All right, but um, from what one of my clan members told me on this Ogren group, he suggested to kill the boss on the I mean the, the the ally of the boss on the right side, but I'm not sure if he meant the boss's right or my champion's right. So I guess we'll find out soon enough. I mean, hopefully it won't be too hard. I won't find out the hard way by dying. Um, because in case you guys haven't done these pleasures yet or you're not familiar yet, you only get one chance at the, uh, the boss, and then that's the last key. You can't go to the next stage yet because you're left with one key, and the next stage requires two. So, we don't know how hard the stages are going to be past the stage seven boss, but, um, I mean, I'm thinking from the way that the trash went all the way up to the boss that most likely it's going to be a fairly easy farm until that stage 14 boss again, too. But it could be wrong. Um, Alright, so, up to four, we're going five, almost there. I apologize, I probably should have done this previously, but I figured I would have enough to talk about here to give some more tips and info, but I really don't have a lot other than just giving you the examples that you'll see how quick and easy it is to clear all of this. And then, um, when I do get to stage seven, I'm going to go on to manual right from the very, very beginning, because... I want to use just about anything on the first round because, uh, I mean, unless the ability has a really long cooldown, um, I'll be fine. I'll have it by the time the boss is up. And I don't mind taking some damage because since in the consecutive rounds, I'll regenerate some of my hit points anyway. I'd rather go into the boss with a little less than full hit points and all my strongest cooldowns up and go in there with full hit points, but my ability's on cooldown. So now you're going to see a really good example where I'm getting to the stage six. This is the last one prior to the boss. And you're going to see this is going to be another cakewalk with this group here. And you're going to see how much it jumps up on the boss. I mean, so far, I think Bellower's one shot everything, right? I mean, I haven't been completely paying attention because I've been talking a lot. But, um, sorry, I know I'm long-winded. I'm trying to give you guys as much info as I can here because I feel like a lot of us are just kind of like a WTF going on here, especially when you go through the second ball. So, alright, yeah, so he's still pushing the line. He didn't one-shot that, and then, uh, I guess the scout cut it with play to it. So, alright, here we go. So, you saw how easy that was. He one-shot just about everything, my bell over there. Alright, now, for this one, I'm going to turn it off auto, because like I said, I want to do manual on this. And because I want to have all of my strongest cooldowns up by the time that I get to the final boss. Okay. Um, it's taking longer than usual to load. I'm running into way too many things on my computer. Alright, so here we go. Alright, okay, I'm going to minimize something here. Excuse me. Alright, so here we go. Alright, so, okay, so this is four turns, this is three turns. I don't even think I need to do anything other than his A1 for now. This should kill everybody. Yeah. If it doesn't, then I should be able to finish them off with these other champions. Because like I said, he's, he's, a, yeah, he's a hard hitter. Like I said, he's normally about 20 second farms on average. Alright, so, before I even attack, I want to see what's going on here. Is, is, like I said, you want to see what abilities the bosses have, because each one has different stuff. Alright, attacks all enemies. 40% chance of placing a fear debuff. I just looked into the fear and true fear today. I wasn't really paying much attention. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It's a big deal. With fear, what fear does is that if your champion gets it, if you use a cooldown while you have the fear debuff, there's a 50% chance that that cooldown won't work. If you have true fear on you, there's not only a 50% chance that that um, cooldown, that skill, will not work and it'll just completely fail and do nothing, but it'll also put that skill on cooldown as well. So that really sucks. So when you have fear and true fear on you, it's a 50-50 chance that you want to use a skill and risk losing it, or do you want to use your A1 and wait until you lose that fear or true fear. So right now I don't have any of those on my champions yet. 
but it looks like one of them had enough speed where they already took a hit on us, so that's not good. Some of my champions already lost a little bit of hit points. All right, so as you can tell, Bellower is a glass cannon right now because he took almost as much hit point damage as the other guys, and they have trash gear on them. But um, he's all about attack, crit rate, and damage. So, all right, so reconstruct. This one, let me see, revives all dead allies with all hit points. Please a sleep debuff on this champion for one turn. Ooh. All right, so it looks like that's going to target one of my champions and put a sleep on them. If he does that to Bellower, I'm going to have some serious issues. I'm thinking like most bosses, there's, he's probably going to target the weakest link with it, though. Which for me would be a very, very good thing because I only have one strong link. All right, attacks one enemy with two random allies. Block damage buff on this champion for one turn if all allies are dead. Okay, so... Hmm. Uh, it looks like I don't want to kill both of his allies because then it's going to block damage on him with this. Uh, that's just one turn. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, so I think the first thing that I want to do is try to get the decrease attack, decrease yeah, decrease attack, decrease defense first on these guys. So then that way all my other champions will get a good. So I got the buffed up on everybody. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now, now you see what I'm talking about, where you don't want to just go in auto. I don't, I don't think I'm going to survive this. Holy cow, that's crazy. Attacks all enemies. Alright, I don't even know what to do here. I'm going to survive three turns. Um, jeez, I don't even know. Alright, well this attacks all enemies and there's a chance of placing a bomb. I think that's going to be my best bet here. At least go out. Nice. And place all the bomb. Oh my god. Now you see what I'm talking about here. The guy just got slaughtered. <laughs> I'm gonna need to go in with more than this. Or I might need to put life steal gear on Bellower just to get through that. That was horrible. Man. Alright, so seems like my Ogren group needs some work, but yeah, now you can see what I'm talking about. Um, even if Bellower had lifesteal on him, I don't think he would have survived that. Now, I'll see what I was talking about where he said to try to kill that one on the right as quickly as possible, but um, I, don't, I can't even try it again. I don't, oh, wait, no, I can. Why was I thinking you couldn't? All right, so I can give it another shot. I mean, I only have like 18 minutes right now until this is done. I guess I'm gonna try it again and try to take out that the allies first there. Rather than the boss. I just I think I'm gonna get slaughtered again though. I have a really bad feeling about this. Uh, what do I want? You know what? Actually I think I want that speed since they got the first turn. Let me at least try that. But I still have a feeling I'm going to get absolutely slaughtered here. That was crazy. That was absolutely crazy. The speed did put me at a disadvantage where they got first attack. The, that, I think it's the, the ally on the right hand side there that I need to take out. I don't, I don't remember. Alright, so... These, at least I know I can get through it better. You see how much it increases. That's why I really feel like the bosses are just way over-tuned right now. I mean, that was a complete slaughter. And Bellower, I mean, he's he's powerful right now. All right, so hopefully the speed good. So he gets first attack. I don't even know. I almost feel like I want to decrease their speed first. That's only 15%. No, no, I'm going to stick with this. Alright, okay, so I'm pretty sure. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's there's no point here. That's insane. That is insane. I'm gonna have to put much better gear on some of my champions here. Um I might as well give them increased attack. Magma Blood is a champion that used to be able to hit pretty hard. He was one of the very first champions that I was using in the game that was a rare before I started getting my epics and legendaries. 
Um, all right, well, they all have the decrease attack already, so I guess they'll each. Right. This is, that's crazy how hard that hit. Um, there's no point in the three turns. I'm not even going to survive for three turns. I don't think this is going to be enough to kill them, though. Not even close. I, I already lost Bellwar. Bellwar is my, my best here. That's it. I'm done. I'm completely done. There's there's no way I'm going to survive this. I think I'm going to need life heal since I don't have a healer. I'm going to have to run with life heal on this. Jeez. That was a slaughter. That was a horrible slaughter. Alright, well. That's all that I got for now, guys. Um. Like I said, case in point, you see the example of where sometimes even one max champion isn't enough. Like I said, I think the problem is that I have Bellower with very little hit points, very little defense. Pretty sure I need to put Lifesteal on him. Even with Lifesteal, though, I don't feel like he's going to heal himself enough. I mean, he got, wasn't it one shot? I think he got one, no, two shots. Two shot, and that was it. Man, I think... Uh, it sucks that I don't have a healer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to run with life steal and more defense on these guys. But yeah, I definitely need to uh, up these guys. This is horrible. But yeah, I mean that's all that I got for today, though, guys. I mean, I think you you saw what I was talking about here. Uh, you got to be prepared for these these bosses, and you got to pay attention to the abilities they have. Um, this one, it wasn't even about abilities. It's just that he he hit so hard with that. That skill, I mean, he just tore right through all of my, my allies, like tissue paper. Let me see what Bellower's hit points and defense is. It's probably really, really low because, like I said, I have him set up to where I don't expect him to get hit. So, all right, defense, that, uh, you know, that is, I mean, that is pretty low, but still, I mean, for him to have gotten two shot, and with how much attack he has, he didn't even, he wasn't taking them down, and this is just stage seven. That was just horrible. But, like I said, I, I could really use a healer in it, but that's not an option yet. So, yeah, I'm going to have to put some life steal here on him. I'm going to have to definitely max out these, the, the defense and hit points. That'll help some, but that's still not going to be enough. He's still going to go down too quickly. I really think I'm going to have to put life steal on him since I don't have a healer. I don't have anybody that can even, like, do shields or hit points or anything that I'm aware of. I don't think any of these guys do. No, he does the increase attack, which is great. I might need more speed on my champions, too, because those guys are way too freaking fast for me. I didn't realize they were going to be so fast. This would be great. The bombs, it's going to ignore defense, but I need three turns in order for it to be viable. And same with Magma Blood. Magma Blood has bombs, too. Bombs are great because they, they ignore 100% of the enemy's defense, so they would tear through them. But there's three turns, and this is three turns. Jeez, alright, well, like I said, you at least got to see uh, what went on there for now. I definitely need to work on my skinwalkers. I gotta start making notes here somewhere as far as uh, each of the factions and what went on, because that was horrible. Ogryn, I'm good, I got past stage 7 with that, so, but it's weird, I guess I'm confused as you get past... Oh yeah, that's Ogryn, excuse me, I was like, wait. Because I thought maybe the next one up is three keys. No. Okay, so I'm really confused because when I got past this stage seven, I only had one key left. And then maybe it's that you only use one key or something. I don't know. I got to look into the notes. Maybe it's that if you die, you don't use as many keys or something the first time around. I don't, I don't know. I'd imagine they're eventually going to make it so that we can buy keys, but for now, you only get the limited amount. Um, Ogryn. Oh, I still do have the three. Okay, that's weird. That's kind of cool. I didn't know that. That That's what was going on, so you actually have. But yeah, there's no way I'm going to beat the stage seven for now. I might as well just go with stage six because I don't, I mean, as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of coin. I've been spending the coin getting all the gear up to level eight. And I, I don't even have enough money to swap the gear on Bellower. I might as well just do stage 6 for now. I mean, the thing is, is until you get to, what is it, stage 10, you still 
It's not a huge jump, but I don't know. Once we can get past these, I'm just gonna, um, I guess I'm just gonna auto farm this, and then auto farm one more. So you might as well use all the keys. So that's good to know. I didn't even know about that. If you die, you don't lose the keys. So that's good at least. That's why on some of them I was able to attack the boss a second time. Now it makes sense. And I remember seeing something in the patch notes somewhere about that. Yeah, that was just horrible. But yeah, I mean, I might as well at least get these clips. I mean, I only have 11 minutes until the, the reset. But right now, this first week, I was expecting to be a train wreck. I was not prepared for this. They kept saying, I mean, they've, they've been saying, like, oh, we've been telling you guys Faction Wars have been coming in to prepare. You can't tell us to be prepared for something we don't know to, what to prepare for. We didn't know how many of any faction we were going to need. We didn't know when it was going to come out, how much time we had, and then... Anyway, so I got one more key, so you can still do one of these. I might as well do this one. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to one-shot everything, but yeah, that was that was a horrible, horrible train wreck. I got to put better gear on some more of my champions, and I consider the fact that with how hard that boss hits, I'm going to need to... I don't know. I feel like I don't want to change the gear on Bellower because I like him for speed farming, and especially now I need the speed farming for the points. Maybe I'll do it to Magma Blood, give him a little bit more defense, a little bit more um, attack. I definitely need more speed on all these champions. That's one of the things, if I had gotten first attack, that would help too. But even then, that boss is going to rip through me unless I increase my defense a lot. This is, this is rough. I really feel like some of these are overtuned because that other boss... With Steel Skull, I mean, yeah, Steel Skull is maxed. He has a lot more defense and hit points than him, but still, it shouldn't. He shouldn't be taking hits that harsh. But yeah, so at least I used the rest of my keys here. So yeah, that's all that I got for now, though, guys. Just make sure you use all those keys. And if you lose to that boss, remember, if you lose to the boss, you can still do a stage six and get that. You can do a stage three, the last key, and at least get some more glyphs. But like I said before, I would focus on trying to get all of your groups past stage seven with this one. I may say forget it. I mean, this is so rough that I'm almost like, does it even make sense investing into these to try to get past this when I have other groups that I can invest more into and get up to at least the stage 14 boss or maybe with some of them even get past it. So my Night Revenant, definitely, that's another one that I felt like was brutal because um, he completely ignores defense. The only way I need to put a ton of hit points on those champions or... I need to make a lot of, like, all five champions with strong attack, and it's going to be a burn fest if can I kill the boss before he kills me. But if I want the three stars, I'm going to need a lot of hit points. Man, that was, that was brutal. But, all right, but that's all that I got for now, guys. This video went on a lot longer than I was expecting to, but hopefully you got a lot of good feedback here, a lot of good insight onto what to do here. Um... But like I said, I would focus on trying to get three or four of your groups up, like, re you know, as high as you possibly can, and then start picking up the lower groups. Like, I mean, I know I suggested earlier to try to get all of your groups past stage seven. With this group, though, I mean, I have such a horrible team, I might just cut my losses and say the highest I can go up to is stage six for now with them. And then once I get some of my other teams up to the point where I can stay, you know, get up to the next boss in the stage 14, see how hard he is and see, like, does it seem more financially feasible to invest into my weaker groups to get them up to stage 14 too to get better glyphs with them? Or does it make more sense to invest into the ones that are stuck on stage 14 and get up to, you know, maybe the next boss stage 21? I guess ultimately what's going to determine a part of that is how hard the consecutive stages are. Does it go back to really easy farming again until the next boss? Or do the um, stages with the trash basically get a lot harder to in between? So um, I'll try to do another update as far as these uh, tips and tricks over, over time. And I'll make sure to date these. So just look for the ones with the newer dates as far as uh, the tips and tricks in the days to come because in each consecutive one, I'm gonna build off of the previous guide. So I did have one previous to this. It really, really briefly touched on Faction Wars because it was all still really new. Touched on some of the same points. Uh, I'd say this one's more comprehensive, maybe skim through that one, but definitely watch the consecutive ones after this in the days to come because I'm gonna build on this one, all right? But that's all that I got for now, guys, though. Uh, I hope you learned something from it. I certainly did. Um, there's some of my groups and I'm sure you're going to have some too, like my, oh, wrong thing. 
uh, like some of my groups like Sacred Order, and it, it sucks because like I'm one of those people that likes the darker side of things. That's why I get a shout out from not only above but below as well, it is because um, I like the darker side of things. I like like Demon Spawn. I like the undead. Like even though I like doing things for others, it's weird. Like I'm not evil, but I like the look of evil. It's cool. So anyway, um, so to me, like with the um, what is it? The, where are they? Yeah, Sacred Order. I have some. Yes, yeah, so Sacred Aelithar is in Sacred Order. He's maxed out with his masteries, and I also have I think, uh, Martyr maxed out with her masteries, and she's an amazing champion too. So um, with them, I ripped through the boss no problem, and but it was a much better group. And that group, I'm probably going to focus on getting up to the stage 14 boss. And depending on how hard the stage 14 boss is, I might try to push to get through him, and then at least I'll have you know, this group that I know can farm the higher stages and then just cut my losses on the Ogryn for now and just say, well, when Ogryn's up, you know, I mean, a lot of it just is, is going to be how close we are to getting past those bosses or past a really hard stage. And also what champions you have. Like right now, my champions are really garbage. Like even my epic here, I mean, um, let me see. I mean, Bellower is a decent champion. He has AoE on every single one of his attacks, but like I said, I think a part of my problem there is I have him too offensive and not enough defense without a healer, which is just not good. And so I have no healer, I have no shields, which puts my Bellower at a disadvantage in his current gear. And then Galcut here, I mean, he's a joke. I mean, yeah, he has these bombs, that's nice, but it's a three-turn bomb. I mean, that's just, it takes so long. I've never been a fan of bombs. And then this attacks all enemies in random order, decreases by 25% after each hit. I haven't even tried that yet, so I don't know how hard or how weak that hits for. And then 30% decreased defense debuff. That's only 30%. You would think for an epic, he would at least do a 60%. I feel like some of these epics, it's like, what the heck? I mean, you got Tyrell here where he does an AoE. Uh, that does a bunch of damage and a 60% decreased defense for two turns. And then if they have other debuffs on them, it even gives them a sleep, which is great. And then he has this 50% decrease attack. And this de decreases the turn meter, albeit Tyrell is a really, really strong epic. But still, you go from him who's an epic to Galcut with his abilities that are a complete joke. And it's like, maybe you guys should have thought a little bit more about balancing before you launch Faction Wars. Anyway, that's all that I got for now, though, guys. Again, I hope you learned some stuff from this. Questions, comments, stupid statements, feedback, uh, anything you want to say, just post it in the comments. I'll do what I can to try to get back to you, or hopefully, if I can, somebody else might have the answer for you. And let's just keep building on our knowledge for each other to try to get through this as a team, you know? Because um, I like to help other people out because I don't want to have the advantage over you guys. I would rather have everybody getting those glyphs and everybody getting through the content to make it more enjoyable for everybody. And then also have it be more of a challenge because, I mean, it, you know, then it makes things more challenging for me. I like a challenge. That's why I really like Faction Wars. And I like the idea of helping everybody else get a cutting edge so that I don't have a huge upper hand with really strong glyphs and other people aren't getting them. And then it makes Arena too easy for me, or it makes me excel in Clan Boss where other people aren't. You know, I would rather have a level playing field and my advantage being based off of my own skill. But ultimately, I'm sure you guys know a lot of what goes on in, in uh, Raid Shadow Legends is regretfully RNG. Because like I said, like I've had really, really good luck on this. I've only had this account for like four months. I got Turbo. I got Draco Morph, I got Nethril, I got Martyr, some amazing, amazing legendaries. I got Bystephus, who's decent. He's not amazing, amazing, but he's decent. Um, Tomb Lord, which is, mm, he's decent for dungeons. Uh, he should be really good for the, um, the bosses. I don't understand how he, he did the 50% decrease attack too. I'm pretty sure on the boss. He had still got ripped through. Um, Rosin Scarhide, he's decent. And then I got some that are just sitting in my vault, but I'm not even using. I'm not using Inathway right now. Not using this guy. Eventually, I'm going to use him, I would imagine, for the boss. I don't know. His reviews are really bad. It's a like Black Knight or something. But anyway, but I've had a lot of luck on this account. Um, not everybody's had the same luck. So, I mean, it, like I said, there's going to be a lot of struggles. I mean, even with me four months in, and I've paid a modest amount, I'm a semi whale. I don't, I don't put a ton and ton of money into this, but I'm a semi whale. Um, and with that said, even with me four months in, uh, there's still some of those factions like that that I'm getting slaughtered. It's going to happen to all of us, guys. So, don't get frustrated. Don't give up. 
just keep working on it. If the highest you can get up to is stage six, you know what, farm those glyphs, build your gear, build your roster. You know, because it's like, yeah, that stage seven boss is really, really hard, but I also have Magma Blood here at, you know, maximum of 12 and 13 level, and a lot of this gear isn't that great. You know, I can max this out, and I'm pretty sure this is, uh, this is attack, so he could probably use speed boots. And then he has only two tiers of masteries, not even the full two tiers. So my other ones have no masteries. None of the other ones other than uh, Bellower has masteries. Not all these other guys have nothing. So there's a lot that I could still build up and level up their levels. Although it's just, isn't it crazy that Bellower here, I mean, he's at level 60 and I mean, 11,700. I mean, that's not huge, but still, I would think it's a lot more than what most of these guys. Yeah, he only has 307,400. Um, I mean, you would think that Bellower would have survived better than that, but I don't know. Again, I don't have a healer. I don't have shields. It's going to be one of my weaker links. I don't even think it's worth me really investing into them until I get some of my other groups um, past that, the, the higher levels, and get better glyphs. So anyway, but that's all that I got for now, guys. I'm going to let you go. Um, again, question, comments, stupid statements, feedback. Just put it in the comments, and... Um, I'll definitely be posting more guides in the days to come. So that's all I got for now. Hi guys, this is Anthony here, also known on this channel as Ascending God. I wanted to thank you for checking out my channel here, really appreciate it. Be sure to check out the other videos, I got plenty of goodies on here. Also check out the description sections in the videos, got plenty of links on there for all different kinds of goodies that I think would be worthwhile for you guys. If there is something in particular that you don't see on my channel that you want to see, be sure to let me know in the comment section as well. And I think that's about it. All I've got, I'm just going to get back to this thing here, I'm pretty sure if I just... Oh. Oh, he has such sights to show you. Wow. That's really funny. Same here.